Top Republicans are calling out corporate America for selling out to the woke left. It's unfortunate that Major League Baseball has caved to the cancel culture. My advice to the corporate CEOs of America is to stay out of politics. Now they're turning off 40 percent of the country who uh, don't really want to be woke up and told that we're horrible people. They are woke corporate hypocrites. That's what they are. There you go. And a brand new op -ed. our next guest says everyday Americans are being taken for granted by major brands, and it's time to do something about it. Former diplomat and author Dave Seminari joins us now. Dave, you're seeing, you chronicle in your column all these different examples of uh, these corporations caving uh, to the left, afraid of being labeled as homophobic or not green enough or woke enough. You give an example, too, of the, of the 20, uh, uh, Twitter follower with 29 followers complaining the Daily Wire is spreading a homophobic and transphobic content. And you might think it's easier to find politically uh, a new, uh, and uh, intimidated Harry Shave to uh, condemn it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take much these days, does it? Um, I mean, you could literally have one complaint come in, and then all of a sudden you've got an, uh, you know, you've got a company that's ready to pull their advertising campaign. I mean, what does that say about uh, freedom of speech? I mean, it's really a sad state of affairs we're in, Brian. We're, as you know, we're in the middle of this cultural revolution, and uh, it's painful. It's painful to be a conservative right now because you're just having politics dominating our lives in every sphere of lives. We're having essentially left-wing woke politics crammed down our throats in every sphere of life. Right, and it's, uh, it's, it's got to stop, too. And so many people are outraged by it. Even to see some people on the left, like Bill Maher, uh, out speaking out, saying, uh, excuse me, what kind of path are we on again, and who are we serving? You also bring up the fact that Koch comes out and condemns this election law, which there's nothing to condemn about it, and they still got condemned because they didn't do it quick enough. Who are these people? Right. Well, this is this is when I started writing my column that I wrote for the Wall Street Journal, Brian, is when I when I heard uh, the CEO of Coca-Cola on another network saying that the law and I can't imitate his very posh upper crust British accent. But when he said the law was unacceptable and a step back and step backwards and so on and so forth, I thought, really? I mean, does Coca-Cola want to be the official beverage of the Democratic Party or what are they going for here? Just tell me about your product. Tell me about your services, but please don't tell me who to vote for. Don't tell me who to think. And, and above all else, don't insult me and alienate me as one of your customers. So what's your call to action, Dave? What are you calling on people to do uh, if they don't want to just be a victim to this? Well, I'm not going to tell other people how to spend their money, but I'll tell you how I'm spending mine. And it's much more carefully these days. Uh, you know, look at companies' websites. I mean, really, look at their Twitter feeds. Look at their social media and find out what are they selling. <laughs> are they selling a product? Are they selling a service? Or are they selling politics? Increasingly, these days, it seems like everyone's selling politics, including Major League Baseball. So I'm not going to tell other people how to spend their money. But, uh, you know, let's put it this way. I took a vacation in Georgia last summer. I was in a beautiful town in the north called Dahlonega. I'm thinking about going back. Um, might be a good time to visit Georgia, and it might be a good time to really think about the companies that you're patronizing and, and figure out what are they selling. <laughs> and if it's politics that you don't want, then look for someplace else to spend your money. Even your shampoo, Pantene, has let you down. It has. Um, and again, you know, Pantene, I, I have no problem with, you know, I have no problem with uh, companies that want to, you know, that want to tell me about their product and to use personal stories and such. But I mean, with Pantene, uh, you know, they're they're sort of promoting a you know a trans story, and uh, I just thought, uh, and anyone who anyone who objected to it is transphobic, right? I just I sort of I you know I have a problem with that. I'm not a transphobe. I'm not a homophobe, but I don't want to be bludgeoned over the head. With, with left wing woke politics in a commercial. Tell me about your shampoo. How about that for a change? Right. Uh, we don't need directions. By the way, we all know how to work it. I don't know why they waste time giving us directions on shampoo. <laughs> but, but I would add uh, one last thing. You say get Black Rifle coffee. If you're, if you're interested in something that's pro American, uh, that's not going to probably do, be, do so, worry, have you worried if you're doing something politically correct, correct? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a paid spokesperson for Black Rifle, but I am a customer of theirs. And what I really love about them is that they hire veterans and they support veterans' causes. And I don't see that as something that's very political. And by the way, I don't expect companies to endorse uh, conservative viewpoints at all. I just, I'm just i happy for companies to be neutral. But what I like about Black Rifle is that they hire yeah. veterans and they support veterans. And to me, that's not political. That's just American. Dave Seminara, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Read his column in The Wall Street Journal. Dave, thank you.